I know you said you're not really nervous about like social media and people and what they think, but do you ever get nervous about your career? Yeah. Uh, well, but this is the thing, man. If I talk about me, it's still mm -hmm. me. Like, it's me. This is my experience. His, it, I'll give you an example yeah. of what he did that I, I don't think I would ever have the strength, the, the fortitude to do. You know, during the the Me Too movement, mm -hmm. when, when that first began, you know, Terry is the poster boy for male Me Too movement. Yeah. And if I went to a part, and I think you're absolutely right, and I'm with you, I was with you, but I thought, how the fuck do you even, you <laughs> yep. know, do, do, I don't know if you know the story, Jackie. Mm -hmm. Do you know the story of, he went to a party, mm -hmm. and the agent grabbed him, yep. inappropriately. Yeah. But if that happened to me, I would hate it as much as you fucking hated it, you know? And I think this is inappropriate and it's wrong. I don't think I would ever have whatever it takes to be public about it. Yeah. Not only be public about it, but just hammer it and hammer it and hammer it until there is a result. Yeah. And to that end, is to uh, to what Jackie was just speaking about, you know, it's a powerful agency. Yeah. And you were asking for this person to be canceled. That's right. Because well, just like every ma every uh, man that was inappropriately violating abusing women. their power, violating women was canceled and you felt like just because you're a man this guy is going to get away with it. Yeah. And you you sought through right to the end. Yeah. That's yeah. I, I could never have done that. And I don't know what that takes to do that. You, well, you know, and this is this. And the only reason I did is remember what fuels addiction, what fuels the rage is the helplessness. And I said, I'm not helpless. I'm not helpless. This is what I can do. And by doing that, I gained my power. Like, I just, but just, were you not afraid that you would lose, you gain your personal power, but were you not afraid that you would lose your um, opportunities? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I told my, after I tweeted out what happened, I came home and I said, hey, honey, Hollywood's over. I said, we're out. And she was like, what are you talking about? I said, I told, she was like, about Bennett? You told? She was like, yep. Yeah. Because she was right there. She saw right. the whole thing. Right. She said, you said something? I said, no, I did more than say something. I wrote it. And put it out. It's going viral as we speak. She's like, what? And she said, you know what? She said, Terry, we had to start over after football. We'll start over after this. I said, okay. Are we good? She said, we're good. Pow. Wow. We fist bump. Because this is another thing. I didn't do this alone. I, She was right there with me the whole time. And she was, Terry, you need to do this. this because this is another Wait, thing. Wait, but she wasn't, you just. No, what I mean is. There's never, there's no women in my family that have been inappropriately uh, abused. abused. And so she was like, you know what, Terry? This stuff happened to me. This is what we're going to do. And I was like, yep. And I was just listening to her, listening. And it was so wild because as the women were coming forward, I was just following their lead. I was actually just in a, my whole thing to come forward was to support the women who did that? Because I didn't even name Adam Bennett at first. I didn't even put his name out there. But all these dudes, everybody, the whole internet were like, they're calling them bitches and hoes. And yeah, that's what you got to do to get in Hollywood. Yeah, they liked it. But the thing is, no one gets paid to tell. You get paid for silence. When you, as soon as you tell, you ain't getting no money. I ain't getting no money. You know what I mean? Like, you don't, as soon as you speak it, it's a wrap. Your, your check is over. Anybody who ever got a check, you were quiet. Okay. Right. And so everyone felt like, oh, this is, they're trying to get some big payday. I'm like, oh, no, nah. Cause that happened to me. And I'm sitting there the whole time, like, that happened to me. Yeah. Then I, you know, I had the conversation with my castmates on Brooklyn Nine Nine before I even went public. They were like, what? I was like, dude, isn't that crazy? And they were like, oh, that's so crazy. Then I went, I need to tell this stuff. So when you What went, was the straw that broke the camel's back? Because I'm sure you were thinking about it for oh, yeah. a while while it was going on. How what long was, how long from the time it went on till the time you went public? Oh, it was it was a year. Oh. It was a year. But so see Answer but, her question. What was the straw that broke the camel's oh, back? Oh, the straw was the straw was again when I when the as soon as everyone did was the New York Times had all this this article about all this stuff that Weinstein was doing. And, and then when I just went online and I saw all these people who were doing, who were just dogging these women out. 
And I said, this is not true. And I was sitting on set and I just started tweeting. I mean, I literally let, I wrote the whole thing out. And I remember it all came, was a, in like a, a whole little system. And then I just pressed go. Like I let all the tweets out at once and I felt, and I went back to work. And then I saw, it was so funny. People were holding the lights and stuff and people were looking at me like, uh-oh. Like like you saw it no, popping up yeah, on people's screens? Yeah, well, people were like, what? <laughs> and as I was continuing the day, you could feel the energy. It was like, oh my God, oh my God. And then my phone was buzzing and my publicist was calling. I had no, listen, no, my wife didn't know. Nobody knew. I just, but it was, this is how you know it's something that triggered. Like it was something that I needed to do that was was it had to change like like I knew that was the only thing I could do and I did it and it felt like wow it felt like a thousand pounds off my back now you mind you I went to the agency the next day like it wasn't like I didn't go people were like I didn't bring it up to the agency why didn't you tell I, dude I told every he I told Ari Emanuel, Adam Bennett, my own agent Brad Slater I told my manager I told everybody and I was like what are you gonna do Oh, we are gonna take this very seriously. Oh, this is crazy. Then it calls me. I'm so sorry. I was drunk. I'm sorry. I was like, yeah, man, but but hey, I'm the client. You're like, dude, you can't do that to the clients. What is gonna happen? Well, we're gonna we're gonna do it, and nothing happened. Zero, zero. And then a year. Then finally, I get a call from Ari Emanuel, who's like, well, I want to sit down and meet with you at the Four Seasons Beverly Hills. I was like, oh, so like he was like, I'm going to do you the benefit of actually meeting with you. And I was like, wow. And then when I met with him, I said, hey man, you know you work for me. And he laughed. <laughs> he said, oh, yeah, okay, uh, okay. What we're we gonna do? What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take his title. And we're going to give him three months suspension. I said, hey, man, you can't touch the clients and go back to work, period. I said, that's not enough for me. He said, that's not enough? I said, dude, what he did, I was like, yo, man, I'm the, cli I, I'm the client. I pay you. I paid you millions of dollars. If I, I said, if I went to Vons and the guy bagging my groceries grabbed my balls, hey, man, he's fired. You don't get to, I don't, now you can get to continue to shop at Vons. Thank you very much. And the whole thing. I'm like, no. But he can make an excuse. I grabbed the wrong bag. Yeah. Paper or flesh? <laughs> paper, you want plastic. paper or flesh? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm, dude, I said, that's not enough for me. And, and they were like, because they thought I wanted millions of dollars. That was the big thing. Like, okay, he's waiting for a big pay. I said, no. I said, what I want is he cannot be an agent. You, you, you goofed it up. You had your shot. You goofed it up. Go wow. go do something else. Wow. But you can't be an agent anymore. Who's gonna I mean, what? You gonna send your you gonna send your daughter to go work with this guy? You gonna send your son to go work with him? Huh? Nah. I, my son's in the business right now. I know. You see what he's I'm saying? Great. Yeah. And he's doing his thing. But I know there's a bunch of Adam Bennett's out there. Okay. And I'm like, hey, no, and watch yourself. Look out, man. And I said, this guy blew it. He had a shot. You're head of the movie department, bro. You you should know more than everybody in the whole building that you can't put your hands on the clients. You're gone. And they were like, no, sorry. They said, we agree to get, disagree. And you know what I brought up? I brought up Mel Gibson. Ari Emanuel wrote a letter on the Huffington Post saying that Mel Gibson should be banned from Hollywood for anti-Semitic remarks. Right. And I said, hey, man. Anti-Semitic remarks, as reprehensible as they are, they're not even illegal. I said, dude, so you saying Mel Gibson should be out, but your boy who did a crime, literally punishable by law, he should be fine. I said, man, read your own shit, man. Read your own letter. And he was, I, I can't. Sorry, I agree to disagree. I was like, I know how you're playing it. So we gonna go all the way. And see, that was another thing, because every one of those little indiscretions, they, you know, they call them micro, that was a macro aggression. You know, he was like, fuck you. I was like, whoa, you gonna really, I'm coming to meet with you and you literally end with fuck you? Like, hey, I was like, all right. See, and everybody was, he won, he, I kept going. I was like, yo, man, he gave me no choice. They gave me no other recourse. I was like, all right, we gotta go all the way then. I spent 
thousand dollars of my own money, Holly. My own money. And I said, you know what? I'll spend a million to win a dollar. And I said, I'll probably never work again, but I know I'm doing the right thing. Like my wife was like, We're with you. She said, wow. I'm with you. Wow. And and what happened? He ended up retiring, is what happened. Because what happened was, you know, you don't rob the biggest bank in LA. You've been robbing little banks all the way till you get to Terry Crews. Okay. So what happened? There were other people who came forward and they were like, Yeah, he did this to me. And we'll join your case privately and the whole thing. And then they, they said no mas because it was start it was gonna get real ugly. And I was like, How far you wanna take it? And they were like, Okay, we're done. So he's gonna retire. We're gonna give you all your fees back that you spent on your lawyer and we'll be done. And I was like, thank you. That's what I wanted in the first place. That's wow. all I wanted. Wow. And that's heroic. It's it's but but this thing, man, and the heroes, it's always an accidental hero. Do you think they learned their lesson? <laughs> no. Do you no, right? Because I mean it's but, not them, it's humanity. No, yeah. No, I know, but I mean the agency, it sounds like when more people started coming and when they saw that it was gonna be a loss for them, then okay, we'll take the L and move on. It wasn't because there was so much remorse. Oh, right? it was it was dirt. I mean, it was they had private investigators following me. They had fake stories they were making up, going right to the press. I mean, come on. It was I was getting warned. They were like, Well, we so we we have pictures and things with you with prostitutes and in, in, uh, in Monte Carlo and the whole thing. And we're about to go public and all that. I was like, oh, go ahead. That's my wife. That's a picture of me and my wife. You know that, right? I said, you know what you just called her? I said, hey, man, I'm sorry, bro. But th this is the thing about coming forward and being transparent is that my dirt, anything I had ever done was already out. Like, I, they didn't have anything to be like, ah, oh, we got you. I was like, no, man, I've been to therapy almost six, seven years now. So, and I've already been forward about anything that you could try to twist on me. So, and me and my wife worked it out. So now, excuse me, that's where the honesty came for me and protected you me. You sleep well, don't you? I sleep so freaking good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 